Hey guys, what's up? It is with Tober, and I'm doing yesterday's drawing. I'll probably do today's later on tonight. Um, so today is day 23. And might be able to do another combo, so hold on. 23 and Twenty-four, oh, and it is spirit. Twenty-third is spirit, and twenty-fourth is galaxy. Okay, say. And show. All right. So, okay. So let's see what we can do. Hmm. I have an idea. I'm trying to speed this up because I'm going to have the monster in a little bit. So, yeah. Now, Didi is really good at doing stars and space elements. Okay. These are the um, silky crayons that I've been using. Thank you, Janet Nash. I do this one. I'm gonna have to take this one outside and um spray it.
give her some juicy lips. I wanna, I wanna see what happens if I try and blend this with a baby wipe. Okay. All right. Yeah, you get some mud. <laughs> but it's okay. All right. So. Kind of like that. So let's put some more, some more blue in there. Some more purple. Now go back through and blend that some more. With our baby wipe. Let's see. I'm gonna need Thank you. 
Thank you. 
Oh, had a comment. Sorry. Good morning, Deborah. How are you today? If I missed you, I'm sorry. I was playing. <laughs>
I'm doing good trying to um combine these two prompts into one. I probably would have been better off using chalk pastels to do this, but uh. But it was fun finger finger painting basically <laughs> going back to go back to our youth
What you working on this morning? <clears throat> what are you working on this morning, Deborah? You got any plans today? All right, so prompt 23 and 24 is done. And excuse me, all that noise, but that's it. So I'm, as you can see, the colors, different colors, like galaxy, 
kind of thing being born. And then that's the spirit in the center of all those polka dots. <laughs> so, yeah. So on the crafting side, I am working on another hat. Hold on one second. I'll get the finished ones. Um, that'll dry. Mm -hmm. So this is, I did want to, let me back up. Camera might shake a minute, but let me back up. Okay, so this is my new issue of Crochet World. So this is a black um, hat with an ear flap for a baby. And her mom can tie it or just let them hang to the side. Um, it's um, This one is a one-by-one one rib. Or this is a, let me see. That's what I hate about black. It's hard to see the stitches. This is a two-by-one. So two knit, one pearl um, rib. And then it's just um, for like an inch for the ribbing. And then you just knit for three inches. I did this in the round. And then I started my decreases. Um, decreases, the first row of decreases was knit 10, knit two together. And you do that all the way around. Then you knit a row. Um, you do that until you get to the seventh row. After you do the seventh row, then you start doing a decrease every row. So um you would do the seventh row the sixth row the fifth row with no knit rows in between and so you get this little hat this is for like a, a six six to twelve month old and it's stretchy so it can grow a little bit with the baby and so i did the, uh, the green one the hunter green one is drying because the wool was a little rough it was um some red heart Super saver, and sometimes you have to wash that and dry it, and it kind of so and it softens it up. Um, so that's what's going on now. Now it's drying. And I need to go throw it in the dryer to finish softening that up. So this yarn was softer, and this is some of my precious, precious, precious um, Stitch Studio by Nicole yarn from AC Moore. And it's the same one. So I'm doing all the ones with the ear flaps. This was a custom order. And she ordered six hats for her baby for the winter. So, And you can see like both of these yarns are worsted weight yarns. But this yarn is softer. And the stitches, it's a little, it, it knit up a little bit bigger than this yarn. Which this yarn was some... Um, um, this is some of the Joanne's yarn. Um, and it's, this is supposed, supposed to be. Hey, hey, Ash. You missed the drawing. I think, unless you were lurking. So, it's supposed to be Galaxy and Spirit. So, I try to do a combo. The colors aren't showing up so good, but yeah. I can crochet. I can crochet too. I usually am crocheting, but she specifically said knit. Now a lot of people will say knit and mean crochet. So um <laughs> that's not my problem if you don't know the vernacular. So she um if she doesn't like it, that's not my problem. She said knit, so that's what she's getting. She's getting knit hats. <laughs> So this is the one I'm working on now. It is um, some brown super saver. So it's going to have to get soaked in some fabric softener and thrown in the dryer as well to soften it up. Sometimes the reason it feels stiff is because they have a sizing, a finishing on the yarn. And it, it goes away once you wash it most of the time. Sometimes it's just some very, very poor quality yarn. If it doesn't soften up, then I have to go and back to the store and find some um, brown yarn that's already soft to knit uh, and redo this brown hat. Um, 
So right now what I'm working on is I'm working on the first ear flap on this one. So I've already started the decreases and I'll decrease it down to seven stitches. And then I'll decrease it down to four stitches and then I will start my, um, I don't know why I keep forgetting what to call these things. One of these Ashley, <laughs> I cord, that's it. And then I'll start my I cord. Um, so I, the first one I did, I knit the ear flaps separately and then I attached the ear flaps to the hat. And I really didn't like that process. So I knit the hat first and then I'll pick up the 15 stitches from under the ribbing. And that's a lot easier to me than knitting the ear flaps first and then attaching them as I knit. Um, that's a lot, lot easier. So the first black hat I did, it was too small for a six to 12 month old. So I gave that one to my grandson across the street. And, um, and I gave him a little green one I think that was too too small for a six to twelve month though so yeah so that's what I'm doing this morning I'm waiting for putting to bring me my monster my little G monster that's what I call my grandbaby B the G monster and um so they went to North Carolina to visit my sister and my grand my dad and so they got back home uh, yesterday, the night before. So, but one of the things I'm thinking of doing for the stream hop tomorrow is um, like this is a man, this is a store bought yarn bobbin. And but a lot of times, if I can't find these, I don't know what drawer or box they're hiding in in my craft room, I'll just take a piece of cardboard and I'll make a bobbin. And you can just wrap it around the cardboard as is. Or you can take and you can cut divots in them. You don't have to be perfect. It's just a shape. You're just doing a triangular shape into the piece of cardboard. And then I just twist that off to create a little divot like this to make your yarn. Um, it holds your yarn better. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, it's just a piece of cardboard. <laughs> so, and then I'll take and I'll wrap the yarn. I'll wrap the yarn around this to have just a little bobbin on the go. I use these when I've spun stuff on one of my drop spindles. And I want it to get, keep a sample for myself. So, like. Like, let's say this yarn that I spun on my drop spindle. And let's say somebody said, well, hey, I want to buy that. Or can I have that? <laughs> and so I'll just, to keep a sample of my spinning, I'll wrap it around, some of it around this bobbin. And I'll tape it with some, um, invisible tape, scotch tape, whatever you want to call it. I'll just tape it down. And then I'll, I'll write up here what yarn, what fiber this was, where, you know, like the um, fiber from Homestead Wool and Gill Farm sample of, and this one was a sample of, of Romney. And, um, and then there's also up under, the top part is a Shropshire sample, but beneath this Shropshire sample is a sample of Romney, and it's a different color than than this um, white Shropshire. This is the first time I spun Shropshire, and I really like that. I wouldn't mind trying to get hold of a partial fleece, so I'm gonna start trying to see if I can source one, um, just to just to play around with it, because it's the first time I've spun Shropshire, and it's a real pretty, creamy, white color, and it spins up real nice, and it has a little halo to it too. So it's um, I don't know how it will wear over the years but some people could tolerate this next to skin some people would prefer to have it as like the top part of a hat or fingerless gloves the part that's um if it's like a, a one of those dual pair of fingerless gloves and it could probably make really good socks too so i haven't really researched this breed but um i really enjoy spinning it if you like all the adverbs i'm throwing at y'all today but yeah so that's how I will make a 
temporary bobbin um, or a little bobbin to hold some fiber or yarn that I wanted to keep a sample of because it's cardboard. We get plenty of cardboard from our Amazon orders. So cardboard is cheap. Whereas a pack of these can, depending on where you get it from, a pack of these could be anywhere from a dollar up to like three or four dollars, depending on what store you go to. So yeah. So one of the things I'm, I'm actually save me your cardboard boxes because I'm determined I'm going to have a garden next year. I, I think I have mourned tater enough that I won't break down crime when I go out into the yard. <laughs> and I'm determined I'm going to have a garden next year. So my garden grew up. I have trees in my garden now. That's what happens in four years. Birds bring seeds you've never seen before and they start growing. And so Dale don't want me to cut down that fir tree that started growing in the backyard. He's going to be decorating it as his Christmas tree. It's smack dab in the middle of the left side of my garden. And my fig tree went freaking berserk because of all the rain and how warm it was uh, last year and this year. And so it grew like crazy. So we got to prune it back. But but both of those are taking up a large percentage of, of my garden nutrients and roots. So I'm moving the garden to the to the front to the side of the house on the left, which is basically a, a big empty lot. So I need cardboard to put down to kill the weeds the easy way, and then I'll just get um, mulch and 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 um, compost and put on top of that cardboard. I'll probably put down a piece of um, landscaping plastic too and then put the cardboard on top of that yeah so i'm gonna try that i'm gonna try that method of gardening we already have one bed built out there but i didn't do nothing with it this year um so a, a pecan tree started grow, growing in it my neighbor has pecan trees and the wind from the storm blow those pecans everywhere and so I got to go out there and cut that pecan tree out before it roots get too established. Um, and then I also want to just move some stuff around in the side yard. Our house needs a lot of work. And then with all the people living in it, it's not, it's crowded. <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah, that's what I'm working on right now. So I started my decreases. And I uh, need to see what I was doing with this row because I didn't write it down. I got tired and I went to bed last night. So and it doesn't look like any decreases on this row yet. So that's good. So that means this is just a knit row, which means I haven't reached Seven, which I haven't reached seven stitches. I only got one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's eleven stitches on this row. So I like knitting with DPNs. Um, some people would have just used their shirts, some short shirts on this, but I like DPNs. I probably should have picked out a shorter pair. But, um, so all I'm doing is I'm knitting a row and then I am um, knit one, knit two together, knit one, slip uh, on the other end, the third one from the end, you slip, slip, knit. So that that's how you get your angles going like that. No, no, that's not my farm. That Homestead Wool and Gift Farm belongs to um, some friends. Well, they're not like friend friends, but fiber friends because I order from them. I try to order for them every year. Um, I think her name, I think her first name is Jan. Uh, let me check for you, give you the correct information. But um, yes, they, they are a... Uh, um, 
they get animals from people who are, are going to animals are no longer viable in the industry for breeding or for um their older animals and so they they take these animals and bring them to their farm so they can live out their days grazing they shear them the the wool they shear they use it they sell it um the lady uh who who owns the farm her and her husband she's a spinner as well and they basically give these animals forever home and the fiber that they sell the, the money goes into helping them maintain and provide feed for the animals and stuff like that um to also because they're in a colder environment so they have to provide winter hay and silage and stuff for them and um so they use that money to help take care of these animals so that they live out their days at the farm and when they pass they pass naturally um they're not sent to be slaughtered because they can no longer uh produce ewes or or the males once i guess once the males get a certain age the um, they they replace them with younger males and then the older males are sent to be to, to be um for meat so they take and they bring in some of these animals into their farm to give them the opportunity to to live out their days um, let me find information for you so they name the farm they call it sanctuary wool now um It's sanctuarywool.com. So let me go to their website for you. I'll post a link in the chat. So give me a second. Sandy, her name is Sandy Ryan. And um and her husband Jim, they're the ones that run the farm. So here's the link to their uh farm if you're interested in in, in helping them and so yeah but i've been ordered ordering for them for several years now and i i have always gotten good fleece from them i've always gotten um pretty clean fleece too uh she skirts it very well and um And she's also a spinner and whatnot. And even if you don't spin or knit or or do um, felt needle felting, which all their wool could be used for needle felting, and they also have, I think, a couple alpacas. They used to have a llama, but I don't know if he passed away or not. But and they uh, also have some sheep. Sheep. What do they call those dogs? The dog you had, Ashley, the one that just passed away. He was a half. Was he a half or was he a full breed? I can't think of the name right now, but. They have um, some of those herding dogs as well out with their flocks. But, uh, yeah, they're good people. So so even if you can't, if, even if you don't use wool or fiber, you can, like, donate, you know, make donations. Yeah, Pyrenees. So they have some Pyrenees. And all their animals are so well taken care of and loved. So, and some of the lambs, they raise if they're rejected by their moms or if they're some of them have been born with birth defects and they still give those animals grims have pernies yeah and they give those animals a chance to to they give them a chance you know so and, and what more can you have than a chance at life so so that's why i try to make sure i order from them at least once a year sometimes i go back more than once a year but uh, I never have any problems with their product. Uh, I love their product. And Ashley can attest that I spin a lot. <laughs> I have bags and bags of hand spun. And once B gets to the point where she will listen then I'll be able to start spinning around her and I can get back to spinning more often. Right now, after I spent after October, I'll be able to spin in the mornings instead of getting up and drawing or staying up late to draw. I'll be spinning and uh, trying to get this, trying to get this um, 
it comes off really easy with this baby wipe. This uh this crayon stuff. I'll make sure I don't have none on my hands in case I touch something that's white or light colored. But these baby hats are easy to make and they're fun to make. Um I just got an order the other day, Ash, from a lady, and she ordered, uh, she said she wanted some of my experimental spinning, which the only thing that experimental that I spin is when I make the um, remnant skeins. So <laughs> I sent her two remnant skeins. <laughs> That's as close to experimental you're going to get with me. I do not like frou-frou yarns. I, I, can, I can make them. I taught myself how to make them but i just do not like them i don't use them i will never use them so why should i waste my time spinning it unless somebody ordered it and even then i would tell them no <laughs> i don't have time for that because no they're not no one's gonna no one wants to pay you what your handmade yarn is worth it's easy to use uh if you want me to do it let me see it's easy it's really easy to use ash Let me see. Okay. I can show you real quick how to just knocking everything down. Let me see if I can back this out. I think that's as far back as it's gonna get right there. I have a new camera, so. All right, so. Every Centro is different. I think I got lucky because mine would even let me do finger and weight yarn on it. Uh-oh, I lost my signal, didn't I? Or did I open up the screen or something? Uh-oh. -uh. Okay, so when you get it, there's your white pig. So you're going to start on your white pig. Let me find the skinny yarn that B hasn't had her little fingers on and gotten it tangled up. Okay, so basically, you're going to have a yarn guide right here, and it works. It works pretty good. Um, I usually use the middle one to help tension it. It's a tension device. So you just take and pull how much yarn you think you need to go around. And you're just going to go and you're going to go around one. You're going to skip one. So you're going to skip one. Go around it. Skip one. So, so basically front, back. Uh, this thing is in the way. Front, back, front, back, like that. Mine is doing it twice because I have threaded through this thing. But that's basically all you're doing, going front, back, front, back. Let me get mine so it's doing it the right way for you. Oh, you don't want to be in there. Come out, come out, come out. And it has a panel mode, too. I haven't used the panel mode yet. Okay, let's get this so it's doing it the right way for you. Put this on the inside. 
so it's out of the way. Let's get back to our white one. So yeah. Just loop it around that front one. And if you wanted to, you could even make a slip knot to make sure it doesn't come off. It's not gonna hurt nothing. And the slip knot will be there. You can just pull it, pull it out at the end. So you want to make sure you're using the side that's attached to your skein. So you got your front, back, front, back, front, back, front, back, front, back. And you do that all the way around. Front, back, front, back. And then after you do that, you, you're going to take it and carry it over your yarn guide. And like you just pull your skein back over. And then take it and go through your yarn guide and into your tension device. And you just start cranking. Um, I usually crank about the same the speed. I don't be trying to go real fast or anything. And if you just pick up a consistent speed and rhythm, you don't have any, any, um, you won't have any skipped stitches. But the thicker your yarn you use, the greater chance you have of, uh, I skipped one, but it'll be all right, I guess. So that's front, back, okay. Front, back, front, back. And you get fast at this. I haven't done this in about a month or two, so I've slowed down. <laughs> and plus, I got all my art. My my art stuff is over here on the on the right hand side, so I don't have that much room to crank this. Okay, so now we're back around to our white peg. So now you're going to take and thread it through your guide. Bring your yarn around. Put that in the center. And if you don't have any, I would suggest and incur it through your tension device. I would advise you to get you a couple of uh, clips to hang on to your project when it first starts. That weight will help keep your stitches pulled down, and you have less of a chance of having a um, drop stitch. It'll give you a little bit of weight and tension on the inside of the fabric as it's being made. And then after that, you just crank. See? I haven't, I haven't used mine at all. Wow. And if it's if it pops out of the tension device, then just move it to the next bigger one. This yarn is a little on the fluffy side. There we go. When I crank about this speed, it um doesn't hurt nothing. It ain't gonna hurt nothing. And you just want to as you go, you just want to make sure that it's catching your yarn and pulling it down. That it's not missing any of the little um, pinchers. That's what I call them. Because that's what it looks like. Little pinchers just sticking up. And I wrote it down somewhere. And I have to find it. But I do believe for an adult size hat. I do 120 cranks. And there's a counter on this. Every time it gets back around to the white peg. It counts. Um. So you can see I have some on the inside now. So once it gets a little bit longer, I'll, I'll attach some more clips just to keep the tension down, pulling that down. Because this is a little bit of a puffy yarn.
And there was 120 rows. I need to find my notes. I don't know what I did with them. But those rows, it'd be enough for you to, it's basically making a double knitted hat because you pull it inside um, the other one. And, um, and it's a great way to use your yarn, making hats for, either for charity or for sale, uh, for friends and family. And then I have pom-poms that I put on the end of them. Here, I'll show you some of them. Okay, so this is some of my James C. Brett yarn that my friend um, over in Great Britain sent me. And I made some hats from that. This was on that Premier yarn. No, yeah, yeah. So you can get pom-poms and put on them, finish them off. Ah, hey, baby. You here for grandma? Okay. All right, guys. The G Monster is here. So I am. I am. She's trying to put up her baby gate by herself. <laughs> she's a smart baby. So I'm getting ready to go. And. I will see y'all tomorrow when I do my next video. And I'll, well, actually, yeah, I got to do a video tomorrow for, so I'll probably do it early, the Wistober prompt, because I'm going to be on the hop with um, Mary's, Mary, and um, Mary's, et 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 can you say the word today? No. That she has going. Um, if you look at my community tab, you can see a list of everybody that's participating in the hop and what time they're going to be streaming. So, yeah. So let me take this and put it down. All right. So I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you for coming to my stream. Uh, Y'all have a good day and we'll finish up this hat and get started on the next one because I have to do a regular one in brown and then I have to do a regular one in like a buff tan color so so y'all take care it just let me know if you need me to do another one ash or i guess if you watch this video at the end of this video again if you need it to um but you know we can always get together on zoom or something too okay deborah thank you thank you for coming by all right y'all take care